Our trip to the Tetons and Yellowstone exceeded all our expectations. We flew into Salt Lake, picked up our rental car, and made our way through Idaho by way of I-15, a beautiful drive of rolling hills and lush fields. Unbeknownst to us, the GPS eventually routed us to scenic Teton Pass Highway. This is a good time to mention that I have an intense fear of heights. As the road narrowed to two lanes, we started noticing very alarming road signs. At this point, it was too late to backtrack. The road zigzagged up and down the mountains with precipices that seemed surely to be hundreds of feet. I would have closed my eyes if I could, but I happened to be driving. The 17 and a half mile pass seemed like an eternity, but realistically, it was about 45 minutes. Here's an aerial view from Google Maps. Eventually, the road opened up and we could see the beautiful valley leading to Wilson, Wyoming, where our hotel was only about two miles away. After about 16 hours of travel, we had finally arrived at Fireside Resort. We just arrived at um, our home for the next three days. It's called Fireside Resort in Teton National Park. It's absolutely adorable. It's these little individual cabins back there in the distance. give you a tour of the interior. It's very cute. Hello everybody. And there's the man of the house.
I hear it. You see right there? Oh, you guys that? Now we're kind of jumping. It's like the wolf head. Oh, you guys can go ahead and untuck your feet, relax a little bit in here. Uh, all that I ask is the current is a little bit swifter, about a foot underneath the surface. And because the headwind does come upstream, bodies move faster than boats. So if you go in the water, please just hang on to the chicken lines so you don't get sucked downstream too far. The way I want you guys to do that in case this happens downstream or anything like that, or if someone decides to go in, please pull them in by these shoulders. multi-day trips these are singular day trips yeah. so that's kind of the biggest difference um but some of the white water down there is the biggest white water i've ever seen oh really yeah oh, wow. so the first time i went it was a 24 day trip second time was a 21 day trip uh the united states for rapids uses the classification of one through five for rapids yes. mm -hmm. we've got class six being unnavigable right. uh the international scale uses one to ten and the colorado through the grand canyon is the only united states river that uses that international scale instead. Oh, wow. uh, the rapids down there go one through nine Wow. Yeah. And uh, I took about that, yeah, right. that size over there, and actually Bryce, who's right there, was on my last trip back in April. We took this size boat. Uh, that one's a 15 and a half foot boat, and we don't have any paddlers. Oh, so that's yeah, just a guide on the back. Just a guide in the, in the middle of the boat. So we have, a, oh, we have a center frame to be a little bit more stable. I see, oh. I see. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Just me, yeah. There are some days I'm by myself, and some days I have just a passenger oh sitting on the front of my boat. So just like one person chain you in. All the camping gear, all the food packs, all the food packs. Yep, so there's designated camping gear yeah. on the bank. So even on our trip, or most people had a river map. And so you can see like there's certain hiking spots you can stop at, so like side hikes to do for the day. Um, and then yeah, camping spot, same thing, along the side of the river. We pretty much average like 15 miles a day, uh, 15 to 20, and then We'll have sometimes it's called a layover day where you don't raft at all. You get to hang out at the same oh beach the other day. <laughs> nice. And those are really nice. Yeah. If anyone wants to jump in the water, this is another good spot to do so. <laughs> so downstream where the river turns to the right, that's where we head into what's called Blind Canyon. We call it that because you can't really see around the corner in there until we hit lunch counter, of course. Still about a quarter mile to a half mile down the street. But you'll notice in Blind Canyon that the river itself narrows quite a bit. It's a little bit deeper and faster in there. So back in Gaging Straits, we also did pass over a fault line. So you'll notice down here, we've got a lot of cliffs. And further up in the trip, we were kind of passing over some green rolling hills. That's because that fault line needs rocks down here a couple million years younger. So completely different features down here.
Watch your head, watch your head. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>